surplus politics and we did say that we were going to talk about the outcome of the APC primaries in Lagos State. Unfortunately, we are unable to establish connection with our guests and so we'll bring you uh, a recap of what happened um, on Monday. Yes, we spoke with the resident electoral commissioner of Ekiti State on preparations for the elections in June. Stay with us. You're still watching Plus Politics. Now, 10,269 electoral officers will participate in the June 18 governorship elections in Akiti State. This was stated by the uh, resident electoral commissioner, Dr. Adeniro Tella in Akiti, during a roadshow to sensitize residents to the need to vote and be peaceful in the forthcoming poll. Teller said electoral officers who comprised INEC staff core members and some youths were undergoing a series of training ahead of the polls. According to him, the preparation for the election is picking up momentum and a lot of activities have been carried out and almost completed. In the area of security, uh, he said the electoral body would work with the police and other security agencies to ensure a hitch-free election. Joining us now to discuss this uh, is Dr. Adeniro Teller. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Adeniro, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Great. Uh, let's start by talking about um, the improved um, INEC. Of course, um, many people have talked about the beavers um, and Anambra State being a litmus test for uh, the upcoming elections in, a, in Akiti State and Oshun State. Now, there are obviously concerns because we saw some hiccups. Uh, I was also in Anambra uh, during that election and we saw that some beavers were not working um, some of the core members were unable to use those beavers. But let's generally look at the readiness of INEC for equity. Okay, thank you very much. The commission is poised and we are fully determined to conduct equity election in an improved electoral process. And this could even be seen in many diverse ways in respect of the step we have taken so far. For instance, in the aspect of electoral personnel, the security issues, the materials, and et cetera. All right, let's talk about um, the issues that um, we have seen. Um, political parties have continuously been dragging um, each other to court, saying that this is not the rightful candidate. But of course, INEC's duty is to um, take whoever the leadership of the party says is the candidate or the flag bearer for the party. Um, has INEC been able to make sure that all the areas where um, these polling centers, including the new ones, the polling units that have been um, added to the ones that were there, uh, will be fully secured? Now, we already know that normally we have police officers who are not armed at these polling units. But generally, can you say that Akiti State will be safe, secure, and we will not have any electoral hiccups come that day? Looking at the state of affairs right now within the state. Thank you very much. The, I, from the commission aspect, in a recent time, the commission has succeeded in bringing up an idea, a program that is specifically meant for the election violence and mitigation advocacy tools. And the whole idea is to identify early signal and relate this to, relevant, to the relevant stakeholders and the security personnel in an attempt to devise an appropriate mitigations to curb electoral violence. Secondly, about two weeks ago, the commission embarked on a program which is being anchored by the Electoral Institute. And this is being taken by the security operatives cascaded in the electoral security training. And the, 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 the workshops was basically on how to mitigate, proactively mitigate against violence as well. What's the biggest challenge that INEC um, is facing right now, or would you would think would be the biggest challenge for you in the uh, equity elections uh, come next month? Do you have any other challenges aside from the hiccups that technology might pose? Again, um, the transmission of results is a thing that Nigerians are really holding on to uh, for dear life, being that this would be one of the guarantees for free, fair, and credible elections. Um, how certain are you that these beavers will work even in some areas where might not be necessarily Adoekiti? 
You could recollect that we had an election in FCT February 2022, and in 2021, we had election in Anambra respectively. And I was fortunate to participate in the two elections. I can boldly tell you that from what we learned so far, we are engaging, and we have done that even here in Nikiti, engaging the core members. We have affected them and engaging them in a root training, which is, we, we, we call it root training. And it's an intensive training that spanned for a period of five weeks instead of three days before the election. So they could even handle the beavers in an appropriate manner. There are some certain hindrances that we pose with the use of beavers. But as I speak to you, we are able to, to summon the courage and, and have the challenges over. So we never have said any problem as it is now. Let's look at the issue of INEC um, officials, whether it be the ad hoc staff or the main staff. Um, many have also queried um, the steadfastness of INEC officials. We've also seen INEC officials being, um, you know, charged to court on election, um, you know, malpractices. Uh, is there also some form of... No. Just hold on. Um, is there some form of training also and retraining on electoral malpractices um, by standing and watching? I know that there's a big issue with, um, you know, vote buying at polling units, even though INEC has said that this is out of their hands. But is there any form of um, upgrade that the INEC has come up with to help with the issue of vote buying and electoral malpractices? On the issue of the, the electoral officials, you will discover that the newly introduced devices being put in place by the commission will not give a room for such practice to take place. Then besides, we have given enough training to our staffs, and we are not even giving to the whole world that they will be satisfactorily working assiduously towards achieving the set goals by giving a credible election to the, to the electorate. On this issue of vote buying, we have embarked on a series of training and enlightenment to the electorate to know that they cannot even say themselves, they have to choose freely who will determine, who will occupy the seat for the next four years. How well do you think that that training, I mean, I saw that you did a road show to try to educate the populace on uh, what should happen during the elections, but... Uh, I also covered the Anambra elections, and I saw a lot of vote buying happening with, across the different political parties. Some came in form of food, some came in form of snacks, some actually gave food and money, um, inducing people who were on that line, um, to, you know, to vote for the different political parties. Again, how do we dissuade that? I, I, I'm asking because the road shows are great, the sensitization campaigns are good, but. How effective are they in changing the mindset of the average Nigerian? We're in 2022 and 2023 is just around the corner where we're going to have the general elections. How effective do you think all that you've done is? The Rush Show is of two ways. The first intent about this is for the electorate to pick up the permanent voters' card that we are succeeded in distributing to the 16 local governments. The second aspect is for them to come out in mass and vote, such that their vote will count and they choose their candidate rightfully. So you're saying that this is very effective or not? You're just saying, you've just told me what you do, but do you think that what you've done so far is going to be effective? It would reflect in the attitude of the voters when they come out on that day to vote. That's, that was my question. Definitely, because virtually every day they pick their voters' card. We normally even give the details of the number of those who have collected the PVC. That is an assurance in a way. So, that so there is sorry, no way has there been an improvement? And so, their vote is going to be count. Then, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Teller. Has they, there they, been they, an the, improvement? The training, the training given to the core members, the training given to the elected officials, the poll officials, and all that. We normally roll the numbers out on constant basis. So that there won't be any alert of, any alert of doubting as guard exercise that we so, are even embarking upon. So can upon. you say that there has been a... And we have created 5% markup contingency sorry, for the I'm total so, number I'm so sorry to speak over officials. you, Mr. Teller, but I'm going to ask this question again. Can you tell me if there has been uh, an improvement in the number of people who are picking up their voters' card compared to the, the, the previous elections that you've had? Definitely. We, we, the reason why we have an 
augment, increment on the number of people that are picking up full on a voter's card is a result of the step being taken by the commission. For instance, we engage the, CI, the civil society organization, the faith-based organization, the market women outreach, and the, the, the elderly ones in, the, 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 in our respective villages who are really involved to know the importance and they should know that the permanent voter scan is so central to this exercise. Without being collecting it, they cannot even pick their candidates rightfully. Well, I want to say thank you, uh, Dr. Adeniro Teller is the resident electoral commissioner for Ekiti State and he's speaking to us live from Adu Ekiti. Thank you so much for speaking with us, Dr. Teller. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Well, thank you all for staying with us and we have come to the end of the show tonight. Plus Politics returns next week on Monday as we continue to talk for development. But even as we are in the uh, campaign season, don't forget to know your rights. Know that you need to get your PVC. It's two more days before INEC wraps up. Um, make sure you get your PVC and get ready for the elections. I'm Mary Anacle. Have a great evening. that we in the political system have been a disappointment and a failure to the country. And if youth rise up, if people rise up against us, they will be completely justified because we don't play according to the rules. We don't have rules that are followed. And uh, we do things, for, for instance, uh, uh, let, me, let me go back to talk about the issue of political education. Where will somebody who wants to benefit from the illiteracy of the people, of the lack of capacity of the people, give political education to the people. The political parties are not interested in people who ask questions. They are not interested in people who are independent. They are not interested in people who will do what is right. That is why I said we in the National Assembly should open up the political space so that people that seek to contest election and I deny for whatsoever reason and contest the election as independent candidates. A system that allows people to pay their pay delegates or have delegates determine who becomes the flag bearer, who a person spends all that money to get to the, that particular office, does not think that it's accountable to the people. He thinks it's accountable first to himself and his pocket, and then to his cronies who got him there. So you have a crisis in terms of accountability. Because uh, now really, the Constitution says when you get there, you're, good, you're supposed to go there and make laws. But the first thing you need to do is to recoup how much you have spent, first and foremost. Then, you know, try and get some more money uh, to, 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 bo to bolster your finances for the next election. Most Nigerians who are savvy recognize that both the PDP and a APC are one and the same party. And that in 22 odd years, both parties have inflicted so much damage to the possibilities of the Nigerian dream that there was need to think alternative. But you see, our people are very slow to adapting to a new way. People sometimes fear the unknown. But in the case of Nigerian politics, they are particularly wary of the fact that what is called structure tends to determine election outcomes. We who supported him were the people who made the mistake rather than the person. Um, he didn't change. Um, it turned out that President Buhari had always just wanted to be president. Um, and, uh, and the governance was not his priority. Uh, there were difficult decisions to make. There was no time to make those decisions. He took all this time to make the wrong decisions. And he allowed the country to drift when he should, ex when he should have exercised um, um, a firm grip on, on, on the nation, um, governed with sensitivity, inclusiveness, uh, uh, some level of empathy, and, uh, and, and lead, literally lead, uh, rather than just simply delegate responsibility. So we, it turned out that um, many of us who supported him were wrong. Um, he wasn't. 
uh, and it turned out that he just wanted to be president. And, uh, and as far as he was concerned, that, that was all for me. Nothing will happen to Okoro Jazz. It's all about the administration of impunity. Okoro Jazz will play the script by the time he comes out of EFCC confinement. He'll probably withdraw his candidacy like a good boy. And he would, of course, like every other one, once he recant, we've heard it from Adam Oshio Mole. Join us and you are immune. He's one of the foundation members of APC, so how can anyone expect that anything will happen to him? All that you are saying is that in the moment, he is required to act in a manner that is inconsistent with his own choice. And when he finally understands that he has to play according to the script, they will pat him on the back, he will go back to the chambers of the Senate. That was the Senate of the Federal Republic.